The Internet of Things is still in its infancy, but it's also a well-known concept that people are already looking towards. The industrial internet is less talked about, but likely to be equally disruptive. So Bill, what's the industrial internet? How is it different from the Internet of Things? You know, the Internet of Things is about thermostats and watches and smartphones. At, at GE, we like to talk about the Internet of really important things. Jet aircraft engines, gas turbines, locomotives. We're talking about big industrial devices, and it, it turns out they're very different than, say, those consumer devices we have. You know, if you drop a cell phone call, usually you get a little irritated. When your electricity stops working, you know, that, you get a very visceral reaction. So we think about the need to keep things running for very long periods of time with zero unplanned downtime. And how will companies benefit from industrial internet? For 20 years, from about 1990 to 2010, the industrial world was seeing about 4% productivity gains every year. Since that time, they've only seen 1%. In order for those companies to get the productivity they need to have the shareholder returns and the money to invest in the future, they're going to have to look to software and digital technologies to really allow them to reinvent their operations. What's the innovations here driving industrial internet? You have to deal with real time in an industrial setting, which means we've got to do more processing closer to the machines. You've got to put more processing at the power plant, in the oil field, on the locomotive while it moves. If you look at that, it's a little more complex because we're not processing everything in the cloud. The cloud's still important. So we need to move the analytics to where it's most appropriate, whether it's in the cloud, at the edge, or somewhere in the middle, to be able to work most effectively. So one of the things we're working on is how do we effectively move the processing and workloads and distribute them to where they are most effective. The second thing we see going forward is analytics. And the kind of analytics we're working on are very different than, say, the consumer. We're working on something called a digital twin. And really what this is about is that for every machine that's out there, we're going to have a digital version. We're going to feed the data into it, and that digital version is going to be an exact replica of the physical machine. Now we can begin to do things we couldn't before. We can ask questions about efficiency, productivity, or how to generate more electricity in the future by working with the digital twin. So these two things are the center point of innovation for us in the industrial internet. How would you say you've seen the Internet of Things and mobile technologies evolve? If you look at mobile technology today, I think we're still really kind of in the infancy. There are three things we're looking for in mobile technology to really help. One is it's just the idea that you can build a, a machine and distribute it globally and have it work in the mobile internet. And as easy as that sounds, that's not always so easy today. Second thing is the, the amount of data we're generating is increasing and expanding at a rate that is mind-boggling. So we need to look at 5G and, dare I say, even 6G, because we need the kind of performance this is going to bring in to get the kind of productivity we want. Both of these are the cornerstone of what we see in mobility. Now, how fast can we get there? That's really the key, and that's why we're here today. Thanks for watching. For more videos from our new economy, please subscribe.